Welcome back to Good Morning La Land. We are all about Wealth Wednesday, and we have Sienna Sinclair, who is naughty girl of LA. Oh my gosh, I'm dying to get into this conversation. <laughs> I want to break through all the concepts and programming about that it's bad to be naughty. No, it's good to be naughty. Right. Everyone, right. everyone knows that bad. if you're naughty, you get more gifts at Christmas time. <laughs> wow. And the gifts we like. So exactly. <laughs> you wrote the book, Naughty Los Angeles. Yeah, tell, us, tell us all about it. So I wrote, I traveled the world whenever I was younger. I was living in London and working for a magazine. And I would always visit places that were a little bit more naughty because I just got bored, you know, with visiting the Eiffel Tower or Big Ben. <laughs> I don't know. There, there was just something in me that wanted to visit naughty things. But I was also visiting naughty places that were safe for women because that's very hard to find. Mm -hmm. So when I came to L.A., I wanted to combine my three passions, travel, um, sex, and history. <laughs> wow. So I, I'm also a big history buff. So in the book, I also write a, a section called... Um, about LA's naughty's past, you know, starting from the 1910s and so on. Wow. So you're going to have to help me out with this because one, okay, so I get that you don't have to necessarily be sleeping with multiple people to be naughty. You don't necessarily need to be doing anything that is kind of whatever, harming anyone. You can be naughty. But I still have kind of some kind of anxiety, if you will, around the concept of being naughty. I don't, I, it's such deep programming. No, it Help is because that. a lot of people are, it's all about, you know, family, religion and what society says, but society is also very confusing because society is telling us to be naughty with all these ads and expressing your sexuality, <clears throat> but naughtiness. And I tell us with my group, and this is something I explain, naughtiness is whatever level you want it to be. So in my books, I offer different naughty levels. So, for example, I love a basic naughty, naughty on the scale. <laughs> I'm, I'm like a one We're and a half. Here. Yeah, yeah. So one and a half would be, let's say, I, I invite you out to a burlesque event with my meetup group, and there's an, a burlesque event every single night in LA. You can find it on my calendar. There's probably sometimes five a night, and it's just very something simple. It's women of all sizes, which I love. You know, it love shows that. you that you're beautiful mm -hmm. in all different ways, <clears throat> and. It's the women take off their clothes, but it's not a strip club. They're just going down to either bra, uh, pasties, or underwear. And there's also some creativity t behind it. Mm -hmm. so, so that's your level. That's my level. <laughs> What's your level? Okay. What's your level? Yeah, that's my level? And then it just, you know, it goes up from there to full on. Okay, know. so let's get real for a minute. Like how okay. far, like how, let's just talk. I mean, because it's okay. It's a morning show. We can do this thing a little bit. I, I, I was there. resistant to having you on the show. I'm not going to lie. Like, well, how what are we going to talk about naughty, whatever. Yeah, really. But I think it's an interesting <laughs> conversation and important one. So how extreme can, do you feel someone can go without becoming out of ethics, becoming like yeah. demonic, becoming so, whatever? So let's how, say, where's that line? For example, this weekend, I'm hosting a Casino Royale 007 party where I'm going to have casino tables, a jazz band, uh, hors d'oeuvres. So it kind of like making people feel more comfortable. Guys are going to dress up in tuxes, girls in long gowns. So again, you walk in, we all seem normal. <laughs> but that helps to get people comfortable. And some people come and they're just voyeurs. Are they just are new to the group and they want to learn about oh, it? Oh, yeah, more? I learned about the voyeur means you like to walk. You like Is to walk. Okay, yeah, yeah. learning the sex. And, and I'm okay. more of a voyeur. A lot of people think, oh, I love to swing off chandeliers. I'm crazy. I've done all that stuff except for swinging off chandeliers. <laughs> But I've done the fetish, I've done all that stuff, but I've learned that I'm pretty much vanilla. And it's okay to be vanilla. You know, that's why I tell people it's okay. Whatever your naughty level is, if you're just a voyeur, you just want to come to my party and you realize it's not for you, it's not for you. But nobody forces anybody to do anything. It does get crazy. It's more of a, a connection. People go there and they talk to people and they feel more comfortable mm -hmm. and it's connecting. And you never know where my parties are going to go. Sometimes I have really tame right. parties I'm well, because it's, it's the it's crowd. It's really interesting conversation to have for women and men who are exploring their sexuality, who are testing their boundaries and figuring that out. But how do you maintain a safe boundary and protect yourself in that? You, you mentioned having yeah. a safe space for women, especially here in Los Angeles. No, it is a good question because that's something people always worry about. But if you know me, <laughs> People, people in my meetup group, they always say they're scared of me because I don't take crap. And I have rules that I set down. And if you break those rules, just nobody wants to be kicked out of my group. So people follow those rules. And people come kind of scared. Like whenever I send out my email, I always say to them, listen, I'm going to be really straightforward and kind of mean in this email because I have to lay it out. Um, there's no touching, blah, blah, blah. Just because people are naked doesn't mean you can touch them, you know, or whatever. Mm -hmm. Not just men, I also think it applies to women because a lot of women think that they can touch other women because it's okay because they're a woman. It's absolutely not okay in my events. So if you cross that line, just even a little, you're out of my group. But that rarely happens. Mm -hmm. I, I do love this idea of um, sort of creating the safe space where people can sort of heal 
a lot of the guilt and a lot of the issues oh, no, they have it, around yeah. not just sex but who they are because no. I, I think that yeah. the sex issue is so deeply tied to who you think and feel you are as a human being and it can often yeah. the issues that you have with sex or money or anything can get in the way of you living your fullest happiest life mm -hmm. well that's also another thing about my parties that isn't mentioned is that people come to my events and it's life-changing for them you know because they're told it's not okay to be naughty you shouldn't do this and they come and they see people of all sizes and races and everyone just being normal mm -hmm. <laughs> you know we, we are normal people it's such a great point and I do I've come a long way I used to be very judgmental around anyone that was polyamorous or anything like that and I've, I've really learned to go it's a beautiful thing if people if this is truly their authentic expression no oh, yeah everyone should be able to love whoever they want as far as if it's not hurt, hurting anyone or lying to anyone or anything like that but I do think it's interesting you know in there's some areas that like the spiritual world they get like where they love everyone and then there's like that's okay but it's not okay if it's like an SM and M kind of thing like yeah where, SM is different right? and I, I do have some people that come and they're all that free love and that's great I have some members that do that and you watch them and you, you see this like sexual energy going through them and it's kind of cool and I wish that I could be that way but I'm not that way yeah I'm more of a one person vanilla same um, I like girls um, <laughs> but um, what is it by curious or, or try curious I'll try anything um, <laughs> but if I don't like it then you know, I, I don't like it but yeah if you, and, but the fetish industry is very different and, and I've been in it because you know I'm a sex coach also so I've had to try all things mm. and it's it's different in the sense that there's there's not sex that goes on and it's more about what really gets you off and what gets you off could be um, shoes. <laughs> you know? So interesting. So we talk about objective sex versus like a conscious or spiritual sex. So objective sex is anything that is external. But it could, but it could be you... spiritual for them because a lot of, and, and, and I do this all the time when I'm working out or something, I call it my subspace. You know, when you're bored or you're doing something you don't like, I just go into like my subspace where to, to make things go faster. And I learned that from the fetish world, they go into their subspace. Hmm. So it's more of a spiritual thing for them. Interesting. Yeah, so I always joke, I'm like, I'm in my subspace right now. <laughs> or, or it's meditating, you know? What, know what inspired subspace. you to become not a girl of LA and to write the book and to become a sex coach? I think it was because whenever, well, people always ask me for my advice just growing up in general, but whenever I would go, when I, whenever I lived in London and I was traveling around Europe, I just found out that there weren't really many female friendly things for women mm -hmm. and it's always about the men like the sex toy toy stores it was all about the men sex toys were all about the men but now it's becoming more about the women female friendly toys like pleasure chest the toys now are more female friendly oriented with design and I just like I said I have a love of history I have a love of sex and I have a love of travel and it was like it was a perfect niche for me you know when you try to think of something find your niche find something you love to do and it was like this light went off. I was like, oh my gosh, I can combine the three. You definitely have a niche. Yeah, I do. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and it's an interesting time in our society that, that, yeah, that, we can, that we're able to openly have a conversation about this on a live morning mm -hmm. talk yeah. show, right? Without holding guilt or shame or judgment, what can we do as, as men, as women, to continue to encourage that conversation so people make safe choices about this without the guilt and the shame? Yeah, well, one thing that I definitely want to address is when you're talking about being inspired is that my events are not, I'm not a swingers club. I'm just, you know, you come at your own level and be naughty, but also I'm all about not discriminating. A lot of swing clubs, they discriminate against people. So that is what it inspired me. I don't like when people tell you that this is what beauty is. It's not what beauty is being in the mm -hmm. porn industry. Beauty is whatever, you know, the eye of the beholder. It's not what you see in magazines. And I, my events are, like I said, any color, any race, because I want people to feel safe and to feel comfortable mm -hmm. and to know that they can come to an event and go, oh my gosh, there's so many different types here and everyone's so beautiful in their own right. way. And who knows what you may like, you'd be surprised. You know? So you're quite a businesswoman though. I mean, yeah. you've been featured in oh, some all, of the top, all top, business. top. Yeah, so, <laughs> I mean, you've been like, uh, help me out on the list of all the places. You've been featured like in Howard Stern oh, and all Showtime, these things. Oh, Showtime, Howard Stern. Yeah, so yeah, tell us a little bit about, about your <laughs> your mindset and what how what you, advice you'd give for people. If they're, they have a brand, they found their niche, now they're, you know, they're getting out there. I always say it's gonna take a lot of work. <laughs> Because what you see on Instagram or social media of people where they are now, a lot of people think that that's how I just started. But people don't understand that I've been doing this for almost 20 years of not doing the naughtiness, but finding out who I am and building 
myself and then finding out what I wanted to do and build mm -hmm. my brand. So, and a lot of people want to get up, give up early, but I would just say stick at it because it's going to be a lot of work and it's not, honestly, it's not for everybody. Mm -hmm. that's I mean, it's why not, that's why it. a lot of people fail because it's just not, you have to be very driven and not care what other people think about you have to take bad comments. I get bad comments all the time. <laughs> you have to learn to overlook those mm -hmm. and just keep going forward. And one thing that I do to keep me focused is there's times that I wake up and I'm like, oh my God, no one cares about naughty. <laughs> 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 you know? Like, am I just someone that's make, given a place for people to have sex? But what I've learned to do is I keep, I copy all the things onto my phone into a folder of all the comments, like compliments I get from people. Mm -hmm. So when I'm feeling bad, I'll read them saying, you've changed my life. You did this for me, you know, if it wasn't for you, I wouldn't be where I am today. And then that gets me back on focus. So I'm mm. like, okay. You know. I love that. Mm. So you show some of the hot spots in LA. Oh, yeah. Pink Taco. I've never been there, but just the name is quite fascinating. Well, it was kind um, of naughty. It's a taco <laughs> spot on it's Sunset. But, it's, yeah. like a, but it it's next to Chateau Marmont, which is famous for its naughty history in Hollywood, Star Scarlet. And then right across the street is Body Shop. Which is also, you know, historical and famous. It's right by Unbreakable. You've been to Unbreakable. Oh yes, yeah, the gym above it. And then it, it. name some other places in LA. What are some hot things? So, what's, if someone's in town today, where, where they're they're level one, they're level one. Where would they go? So <laughs> they're level one. <laughs> <laughs> what, what is the scale? Is this a scale? Is this a scale to hundred or is this a scale to five? Yeah, we want to know. Well, you know what? There's you, some you great places. Like an app. I think you need an app of like. Well, I have my like, website that has like, a like, calendar on it and lists every. There's over 100 naughty events going on in LA for the month. So there's something going on every night. You can check it out. But Los Feliz actually has a lot of great places. I live over there, and El Cid does burlesque shows, and also. Um, oh, what was that one place right That's next door? Actually, Dresden. I haven't there. There's a Dresden, mm -hmm. and then there's that theater right next door. I can't remember. I'm too new to it. I know. Yeah. But then they also have Cheetahs, which is a strip club, but not fully. I haven't been there. They, they have drag <laughs> shows at the strip club, too, which I oh, find oh, fun, fun yeah. just to mix it up. And there's also, oh, you know, I'm having a brain fart. Well, okay, so <laughs> there's there's also this one owned by oh, Mark she knows, and Johnny. Oh, she knows. Know, she knows. She knows. I, yeah. uh, I admitted I'm a one and a half. Oh, Jumbo's Clamor. Jumbo's Clamor. Take it down. Yeah. You you know, the there's this great spot in, in disguise. Is this, like, super classy Parisian cocktail spot. And the next thing you know, at about 11 p.m., the ceiling opened up. And this golden cage oh. drops down. It's called Porvu. Yeah. It's and this Porvue. woman who was, like, just beautifully dressed in like sheer and sequins and like all of a sudden just starts taking it off and it was just but it was an incredible performance they also own other clubs Le Seconde. I can't remember how to pronounce the name, but they have salsa, sexy um, performers. La Biscarga. Yeah, that's it. La oh, yeah, yeah, on yeah, Western. Yeah. Um, they do yeah. some great burlesque over at Harvard and Stone yeah. as well. They're by um, No Los Vacancy. Yeah. yeah, No Vacancy. Yeah. 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 So mm -hmm. fun. And I can't forget to mention their 80s club break from 86, my favorite. Mm. <laughs> so question, because we, we, we talk a lot with dating experts and whatever, and we see that the the dating world and traditional things, people are moving away. I mean, the younger generations are moving away from oh, traditional yeah. things. Yeah. And I think that you can still be, you know, spiritual, empowered, all the above, and break through whatever the constructs of the culture has told you about relationship um, and find your own unique truth in that. Where do you see relationships in the industry going? Oh, I mean, I already see them happening all the time. People are more wanting to not be in relationships, but try the maybe the polyamorous lifestyle because they're just wanting to see more what's out there. They're tired of, of the norm or what, you know, the monogamy. They're also wanting to try out because a lot of people will come to my events and they'll come with different people each time because they're just trying out different girls or different guys to see what fits kind of their lifestyle mm -hmm. and just trying out different things. and seeing where it goes. It's kind of like, you know, your 20s, you're kind of just experimenting. And then when you get in your 30s, you kind of know a little bit more what you like. But there's also some 40s and 50 year olds that are like, they've been married and they want to try it all out again. You know, they're back to their 20s. It is interesting. I think, um, so we sometimes on the show talk about Osho, who's a spiritual teacher in the you know, 60s, 70s. And um, he wrote a book called From Sex to Super Consciousness. And so much of it was just about se uh, uh, self-exploration, right? Yeah. And, um, and initially it starts out in a place where it's just about something that's physical. But over time, as you begin to explore both yourself and other people, you come to deeper and deeper realizations, not just about yourself, but about the root of sex, which is creative expression itself. It's that actually is, being yeah. tapped into and in, turned in onto life itself. And that's what a lot of people, when they do kind of my events, they, they feel that way. They feel like I'm, I'm crazy expressing myself sexually in some form, mm. whether it's dressing up. 
because I always have theme nights are just, you know, what they're into and being a voyeur or something, you know? Because <laughs> me, I'm the voyeur that's like, excuse me, can you do this position? Please? Is a voyeur like a level three? Level four? <laughs> actually, no, no. You know what? Actually, most people who come to me and, and they're nervous, they're like, but I'm just a voyeur. And I'm like, that's okay. That's more than what most people are. So a voyeur is actually a level one to many people. Wow. I, you know, <laughs> as being from California, I know a lot of, of couples that have tried swinging. Have, I've not ever done that. And I am a, a serial monogamous. I have a boyfriend, a wonderful boyfriend. But I do find that most people I see that go to polyamory, go to swinging, go to whatever, they go way out there and then they, it never seems to really work out. Not gonna lie. It's because they're, one thing that you need to do before you do this, you really need to talk and communicate with your partner about what's okay, what's not gonna be accepted, how far you should go, should you see people outside of it, you know. And I would imagine as a coach, you probably help to mediate that, right? Oh yeah, yeah. if they need my help, yeah. But you, like, is kissing okay? Because if you haven't talked about it and all of a sudden you go to a swinger event and your guy is kissing a girl and you freak out and then next thing you know there's drama and you're out of it no. and that ruins your experience. Mm. Wow, so do you see it working for people where they really truly are dating multiple people or having sexual things and being able to maintain a relationship or um, do you think it's avoiding? I, I, I Sometimes think, I wonder if it's avoiding intimacy. I think it's 50-50. I, th I think it's 50-50 because some people really want to try it, but then they're they're doing it more for their partner rather than for themselves and are really into it. But then I see some relationships that it really works and they've got it down, you know? Yeah, yeah. But, you know, that's that's a little bit further, you know? That, so yeah. where, can, <laughs> where can people find your calendar yes. and work with you? Oh, NaughtyLosAngeles.com. So they can just find my calendar. I have a Naughty LA magazine. I also do Naughty Tours of LA. I take people on historical tours and behind the scene porn shoots. Whoa, and, I host, wow. and, I host weekly, I and I host <laughs> weekly 10. parties. That's level 11. I'm scared. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you so much for being yeah, thanks here. Thanks for having me. Yeah, we, we, we embrace oh, all uh, expressions and know there's free will as long as no one's hurting or exactly. anything lying or whatever. Okay. So yeah, thank you so much. Stay tuned, work. we'll be back with more on Good Morning Wild.